right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Wendy Swire, who is over the other side of the country in Bethesda, Maryland. How are you doing, Wendy? John, I'm great. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And for two decades, uh, Wendy has been coaching leaders in the US and globally and is the author of the co-author of the highly acclaimed book, Anytime Coaching, Unleashing Employee Performance and a thought leader in the field of neuroscience, uh, which is a neuro leadership, rather, which is something that we want to get into today. And that what we want to talk about is mental fitness and neuro leadership for sales and business professionals. So let's split them up for a second. I mean, do, do you want to just define neuro leadership and then we'll go back to mental fitness? Absolutely. I'm happy to. So neuro leadership is really taking cutting edge, the latest research and cutting edge science on the brain, neuroscience, and applying it to fields of leadership. Uh, management, and that includes sales. And how do you really learn from what the science is telling you? Things like resilience, about positive emotions. It can be on a whole variety of topics from brain health, but just really the intersection of science and leadership and sales. Right. And why? And just before we go on, um, neuroscience, it seems to have, you know, be gaining in popularity a lot more people are talking about it you've obviously been in this field for a for a while uh, why do you think uh, neuroscience and is suddenly becoming so popular in the business world well i've been interested in brain science for a long time as you said but the more you understand that the brain is the most powerful information transfer system on the planet there's nothing more powerful than your brain. So the more that you can understand this little three pound mass that you have, every all, all of us have this amazing um, capability. The more that you can understand just a few things about the brain, it can really be insightful. You know, why do people keep doing the same thing over and over? That can be tied to brain science. Uh, how do you um, basically control our primitive, our reptile part of the brain, our instincts, so you can be at your best thinking and performance? Again, just a little bit of science explains a heck of a lot. Uh, and absolutely, and and uh, and the other part is uh, as we started talking about is the the mental fitness part, and I guess the, you know they obviously go hand in hand, but certainly I think people have found over and certainly the pandemic uh, contributed to that, but certainly um, a lot more mental pressure, maybe mental health issues uh, than than almost I wouldn't say than almost ever before, but perhaps they're coming to the surface more. A hundred percent, John. I, you know, I've read something like one in four people are suffering from loneliness, anxiety. It's unprecedented. So mental fitness, if you think, let's think about physical fitness, right? We go to the gym, we work out, we get in shape. We know that's good for our heart. It's good for our mood. It's good for our brain. I want your listeners to think of mental fitness as the equivalent. It's basically the capacity to respond to workplace and life challenges with a positive rather than a negative mindset. But here's the thing, you have to train your brain, you have to train your mind to do this work. And just like we go to the gym to strengthen physical muscles, when you are doing mental fitness training, it's no different. Yeah, and I think, and I'm, I'm glad you raised that because, and I'm glad you used the fitness analogy too, because I also think that, unfortunately, um, you know, we've grown up in a culture that separates mind and body, right? You know, you go, you go to a psychiatrist for your head, and you go to the doctor if you've got a pain in your leg or back, but they, but the two don't connect, right? They're totally separate. Uh, no, the two are totally inter interconnected. And mm -hmm. I think we know that when you are feeling good, um, you know, you're when you're feeling good, you're in shape or whatever it is, you take a nice long walk, um, you just your mind is clear. So I think you, it really is important to understand that you have to train what we call in the methodology I use positive intelligence. You have to train what we call our saboteurs. And those are these negative reoccurring thoughts and patterns that we have. It's a voice 
that cannot, that, that, crit, that can be a judge, it can be a victim, it can be, there's so many, there's 10 of these saboteurs, but we have these voices, these negative voices, these inner critics, these inner gremlins, we have them for survival, but you have to train your brain to move away from them and get to a different part of your brain that will give you more positivity, joy, happiness, outlook. And obviously that is all going to fuel with your, uh, with your listeners, your audience, sales performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I think that unfortunately there's a lot of influences outside now today that feed into all of this and, you know, social media, you're bombarded constantly with information, news that's just set up to provoke emotion. And, and I read somewhere in the psychology today or something that, I don't know, with 70 plus, maybe even more 80 percent of your thoughts on a negative day basis or your self talk, sorry, on a daily basis is negative. So you're being negative. The world's being feeding you with all this negativity. I mean, at some stage you're going to crack. So the, the point is, as you said, is you have to step back from this. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, here's the thing. And, I, and again, this is a, a phrase that I use a lot in, with my coaching clients and in training. Your brain has a built-in negativity bias for survival. It kept us alive, you know, a couple hundred thousand years ago. It really is. We are there to worry, to be vigilant, to to always be looking over our shoulders. So that's our natural state. You actually have to rewire your brain to get to the sage brain to override that. So yeah, the world is not, you know, there's a lot going on. You know, what mental patterns and thoughts are you putting in? And it's even more than just turning off the news, right? Or saying affirmations. Mm -hmm. yep. There's even more work involved here. So it's pretty exciting. I think, I think we're gonna be, no, you're gonna hear more and more about mental fitness um, over the years, because it's so important. So, so what are some of the steps? Uh, what are some of the first steps that you can take towards um, mental fitness and towards, as you said, cutting through the noise to get to the sage brain? Yeah, that's great, great question. Thank you for asking that. There's really three core muscles that you need to use. The first is you've got to be in tune to notice when these saboteurs are coming at you. And, you know, often it's just so small that you're just, you know, something happens, you say something, you're not even aware. So we're not talking about like a full-blown amygdala hijack. Um, this can be your avoider. You can have a controller. You can judge yourself. We always beat ourselves up, right? If we make a mistake or didn't say something at a meeting, who's our worst critic? Often it's ourselves. We often judge other people. Um, I, there's 10 of these. There's a pleaser. You can be very restless. You know, the grass is always greener. So you've got to recognize the tendencies. The second is that you actually have to interrupt it. And you do that through getting much more connected. It takes as little as 30 seconds. It can be very, very small body practices that you train yourself to do over and over. Um, something as easy as, you know, rubbing your hands together. It sounds so simple but even a physical technique gets you into your body, moves you to a different part of the brain. And then this, the third step is you just have to invite a different, more positive uh, mental fitness response. And we have, you know, in my methodology, positive intelligence that I studied under, there's five, you know, responses. One is be curious, just see the word through curiosity. Uh, one of the most powerful is just empathy, tremendous empathy for the other person who you find difficult, empathy towards yourself. You can use innovation techniques. So there are a whole bunch of like really cool techniques you can use. Again, um, don't let the simplicity uh, fool you. It requires work to be able to do this because these saboteurs are really strong and they will just come after you. Yeah, no, that, that, that's extremely insightful. And I love what you just said there about empathy towards yourself. I'm not sure I've heard that. I've heard somebody actually articulate that before. So so thank you for that, because I do think uh, I do think we we beat ourselves up, you know, severely, obviously, as you say, I mean, it's it's rooted in, in the origins of our of our of our human psyche. Uh, but I do think we, I think, I think sometimes we think we know ourselves, we think we know about it, but we don't actually have great self-awareness or we don't empathize with our, with ourselves. And, and I'd like to explore that a little more because the idea of showing empathy towards yourself, I think that's a powerful concept for people. 
Oh, I'm really glad you like it. Yeah, we don't. You know, look, I, you got. I'm a hyperachiever. I mean, I'm I'm a sage, <laughs> but mm-hmm. my saboteurs. I'm a hyperachiever. I love to be successful. I want to always. What's the next thing? I like to control. And when something, one little thing, you know, I'm at a meeting, or let's say I didn't win a contract. I am the first to tell you I'm going to beat the heck out of myself. Well, one of the most powerful things you can do is really do some visualizations, do some powerful work saying, you know, I don't deserve to be beat myself up. That's my saboteur. There's always learning. There's a gift and opportunity from everything. You can learn from failures, from challenges, from mistakes. And to be able to do that, you've just got to give yourself a little grace. I, you know, I tell my clients, particularly under this this last two years, the pandemic, the challenging environment, the supply chain, you name it, um, put yourself under an umbrella of grace. No one else will do it. Yeah, and, and I think that's a, I, I love that. And I think that's an important thing about uh, at the end of the day, I mean, nobody's going to care about you as much as you do about yourself. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And, and therefore you have to, and certainly, and I think here's the thing in a business environment, uh, Wendy, I think sometimes people, sit around too much waiting for their boss or their company or somebody to do something for them, like to train them or to do whatever, which is great if they do. But the chances are at the end of the day, the investment of other people in you is going to be quite limited. You have to invest in yourself. Yeah, I cannot second that. The fact you're listening to a podcast, reading an article, trying to improve yourself, you own your own mental fitness your spouse doesn't, your boss doesn't, your you know counselor doesn't, you own it. Um, you also own your own learning and development. This is personal leadership. And I know you've had sessions on this. You own it, um, don't wait. And if you wait, that's usually a saboteur. There's usually a saboteur saying, well, no, I'm not supposed to do this. And that's why you have to go to war with these saboteurs. Yeah. So how do um, so how do how does somebody then discover or, or uncover which saboteurs are really, you know, the ones that are undoing them the most or do all the different saboteurs? I mean, do you have a multitude of them and sometimes one is more more prominent than the other? Well, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, there is an assessment. There's a free assessment you can take. Um, I can give you, you know, we can put that in your notes yep. um, where to get that. Um, you can take it at positiveintelligence.com where Shazad Shamin, is, he's the founder of this. As I've, I study directly with him. There's an assessment. Um, people can, I'll give you my email address. People can contact me if they would like more information. So the first is just to, to start to track what they are. And again, um, you know, some of these saboteurs are really helpful. They fueled your career, right? So if you're, I'm just going to use hyperachiever. Um, gosh, you, you are successful. You're always chasing after the next thing. That's a wonderful quality. The question is, is it serving you? And so what we say is we don't want to take away the, ne- you know, the bad pieces of these qualities. So it's good to be a people pleaser, right? That's wonderful. You have people care about you. It's wonderful to be rational, right? that you're always thinking logically and you're organized and you're thinking. The problem is like all negative emotions, uh, what we say is, you know, there, there's, a, there's a point when you are put your hand on a hot stove, right? And feel pain, that is a good thing for about what, five seconds. It's a warning, mm-hmm. it's telling you. So if you, know, if you have a negative experience, it's not a bad, um, no, a negative feeling, it's not a bad thing. The problem is we leave our hand on that hot stove for too long and we ruminate and we just get stuck in these patterns. So stage step one, thing one, understand what they are, start to label them, start to notice them, and then really just get to the gym, (laughs) the mental fitness gym and practice um, moving into a different part of your brain. It's that simple. Yeah, it, 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 it's fascinating, uh, but obviously it requires a little bit of uh, commitment on, on the part of, of us as individuals to do that. And and I think it's it, it's interesting because part of what you're saying is that you actually have to focus in on yourself. You have to take time out. As you said, you've got to you've got to try and develop some levels of self-awareness. Uh, unfortunately, as I have said many times, is these are almost counterculture type of activities nowadays because we're we're bombarded we're taught to never be never be alone with your own thoughts for goodness sake there's always an instagram story or a tiktok <laughs> to watch you know um so so i think i think people have to re i i, I think as you said 
it sounds simple, but I think people have to make that commitment to saying, OK, I'm going to spend a little time with myself. I'm going to spend some time recognizing these things. I'm not just going to always let myself get distracted. Yeah, 100 percent. So a couple thoughts on this. One is you want to be more successful, have stronger relationships, better performance, better at work, better with your family, your loved ones. You've got to work it. Now, the key is once after you notice these saboteurs, then you can intercept them. Right. Uh, and then you have to really move into self-command. You have got to interrupt their noise. Now, that's just like like anything. If I wanted to get, you know, get in better shape, it's not going to happen without the work. So really go back to the gym analogy. Um, it can take as, as quickly as 30 seconds to move from that negative saboteur brain, those negative thoughts to the positive. That's it. But you have to, again, just do the reps, do the work. Um, and by the way, we know the cool thing about knowing, let's tie it back to neuroscience. Mm -hmm. You can rewire your brain. You can create new neuro neuronal networks. That's called positive neuroplasticity. You can do that starting and as, as early as, you know, 45 days, 30 days. So again, I want people not to feel overwhelmed. I want them to say, wow, I actually can start to rewire the sage portion of my brain. It is doable. You're not too old. You're never too young. And I have seen it. The research is out there. I have done it myself. Um, I've coached people to do it. So I don't, you know, um, it is really a doable thing. Yeah, and I think the thing there is what you're saying is, like, I mean, number one, you obviously you have to develop a level of awareness and then you have to be intentional in how you how you act after that and what you do. I think so. And I think but we all know what these that sage part and we all know when we are in a really good place and we're feeling relaxed and energized or comfortable and self-confident that's your sage brain when you are feeling really um it's not even different than flow state but it really when you're feeling like oh you know things are coming to me naturally it's an ease and flow when you're in the sage when you're in that part of your brain you're in ease and flow and it just builds upon each other so the saboteurs will tell you a lot of different lies but you don't have to live that way you really really don't yeah, and I think that's a, I think that's a great message for people, and especially going back to what you said about being able to rewire your brains, because I think sometimes you know we, I think we're very good sometimes at outsourcing everything and sort of saying, well, I have no control over this, so I'll just outsource my life to fate, as opposed to like really, um, you know, taking on taking on the challenge of, uh, and the other part I guess is, it's very easy sometimes to go, well, that's just me. Well, you know what I'm like. You know, and all of that, mm -hmm. as opposed to going, well, yeah, that's fine. But if that isn't serving you or anybody around you, then it's perhaps time to change. Yeah, I think so. And look, I, and I, you know, the quick story I'll tell is I'm kind of the poster child for this work. The reason I got interested in brain science, 2007, very challenging time for me personally. Um, I had a young baby and my mom had just died of cancer and it was just bad. It was dark. It was, you know, and then this is like 2000, actually 2008. Then we had the great, that other mm -hmm. great recession. And um, it was a really, really challenging time. And I said, I just have to understand more about this. And literally I learned a little bit about brain science and it just opened up a lot. And I li I have rewired my brain. I am incredibly optimistic, resilient, um, and, you know, again, I wasn't, wasn't like that before 2007. So I did the work and I learned, and, um, I know that the cool thing is what you think about actually changes your brain structure. Every time you learn something new, you're actually rewiring your brain. I mean, I think that's just super cool. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. I mean, I think it, it is super cool. And I think, uh, I wish more people realized it so the, the work that folks like yourself are doing is is very very important um all of wendy's information is going to be below this video so you can um, you can find out more and get into contact with uh, wendy but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do oh well thank you again for having me so i'm an executive coach uh, I do training facilitation i do a lot my i'm known for being in the field of neuroscience and the applications, mental fitness. Uh, I work with corporations, leaders, executives. I'm based in the Washington, D.C. area, clients all over the world. 
Um, let's see what else. I love to geek out on brain science, but you don't have to, you know, again, for some clients, they're not interested, just more, just go out and, and, and challenge yourself, learn a little bit about your brain. I also run something called the DC neural leadership group. It's a salon that I started. It's now because of pandemic virtual, any run around the world can attend. And, you know, four times a year, we study brain science for an hour with an expert and it's all applied. All of this is applied. Again, don't, uh, I don't have a PhD in, in biology or science. Uh, anyone can learn this stuff. So again, I'm really here to help increase peak performance for people in any, any way that I can. That's my job. Oh, fantastic. Well, as you can see, uh, again, Wendy is very knowledgeable in the field. I would, uh, really recommend people to reach out. Hey, I mean, this is such a great opportunity to to maybe change the rest of the trajectory of your life, your career, your home, whatever, by by starting to work that that all important muscle that, you know, in the brain. So listen, thanks again, Wendy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again real soon. Thank you, everyone. Nice to chat with you, John. You too.